Hello guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another of my videos. So today I'm bringing you guys the best Bloodline updated tier list in Shindo Life. Now if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, the comment for more. Also, be sure to t let me know if you guys enjoy the drip. Do you guys like the new Atatsuki drip, guys? It's very nice. I try to make my outfit as good as possible. I changed it up, guys. I hope you like the new drip. But yeah, guys, this is actually going to include the new Bloodlines, Ryan, Rengoku, and Vine. So be sure to tune in till the end, guys, and watch it if you guys are confused about, you know, why I put a Bloodline in a certain spot. I will explain each and every Bloodline throughout this video. But yeah, guys, but yeah, guys I'll see you in the video, guys. All right, guys, so before I start this, you guys will notice that there are actually Bloodlines missing. But they are actually here. As you guys can see, they are all here. All the Bloodlines are here. It's just that I have to, you know, I scroll down and up. But I'll actually, I'll keep it like this for now. But yeah, guys, we're actually going to start with Akuma. Now, I'm going to be I'm going to be rating these completely based off of how they perform in RPG and competitive. Nothing else other than that, guys. So uh, CC isn't included, and any of that stuff also isn't included. All right, so we're going to be starting with Akuma. Now, Akuma, in my opinion, after realizing how much damage the C spec can do, it's actually going to be in the good tier. It was in the good tier before, but it's actually really low, and it was only because it was good in CC. But this is actually going to be because Akuma... The Akuma C spec is actually extremely overpowered, especially now because it's still not fixed. Next up is going to be Golden Joke. Golden Joke is going to be in Broken. It's going to be a first one. There's not much to say about this. It does a ton of damage. It has a good stun. It's very good for combos as well, just because the amount of raw damage it brings to the table. It is a very good bloodline. Next up is going to be Ashes Storm. Ashes Storm is going to be in the really good tree. Now, Ashes Storm actually did get a nerf, but it is still very, very good. So if you guys are confused about how where Ashes Storm ranks and where it doesn't rank, it is still really good, guys. Next up is going to be Azarashi. Azarashi, I'm actually going to be putting at the top of good. Now, the reasoning for this is because Azarashi actually got moved to the element slots. The reason why it's not going to be in really good anymore is because I realized that the Z-Spec has a delay on it, so it's actually not the absolute best for M1 combos, but it still is really good. But not really good, as in this tier list, really good. Next up is going to be a Zim Senko. Now, if a Zim Senko, in my opinion, it was in the really good tree, but now it, after it got nerfed, it is only going to be at the top of good for now. This is simply because a Zim Senko got a big nerf recently, which reduced the stun time on its uh, C spec, and it actually made the second ability not as good as it used to be, and that used to be its best ability. Next up is going to be Bankai. Bankai is actually going to be a broken below Golden Joke. Now, the reasoning for this is because you get a su you get a Susano. Uh, you get this. You get the C spec glitch. You get the uh, crows. You get the auto dodge. You get the uh, you get the raw damage, and you get a stun. It's just a really good bloodline. It's very good overall bloodline. It's going to be in broken because of that. Next up is going to be Black Shock. Now Black Shock, in my opinion, is going to be in the good tree at the bottom. Now the reasoning for this is because Black Shock, in my opinion, it just isn't very good. I know the end lag on the Z spec is pretty decent, but I just I think it's only good. I think it is only good. Next up is going to be Bolt. Now, Bolt, in my opinion, is actually going to be in Man. Now, the reasoning for this is because Bolt just doesn't bring that much damage to the table. However, it does have pretty decent stuns, which is why it's not actually going to be in the bad tier. Next up is going to be Bubble. Now, Bubble is actually going to be in really good at the top of really good, very close to being broken. Now, Bubble is one of the most underrated bloodlines in this game. I know everyone talks about it, but I never see anyone use it. Bubble is so ridiculously good. It is unreal. If you guys do not already have tried bubble then try it it is good guys trust me trust me on that next up is going to be clay we're putting clay at the top of man now the only reason for this is because a lot of people said clay is actually decent i underrated clay people got mad i put it in bad so i'm going to listen to you guys on this one i do not know anything about clay so i'm just going to put it in man at the top guys you guys moved it up in the tier list congratulations Next up is going to be Crystal. Crystal is actually going to be at the bottom of good. Now, the reason for this is because the only good ability Crystal is the first one. So, that is actually going to be the reason why it's in good. There's not much more to say than that. Next up is going to be Dongan. Now, I'm going to put Dongan in really good at the bottom of really good. I feel like Dongan is one of the most underrated bloodlines in the game. Dongan is just so ridiculously good. It's easy to hit its abilities. And it does have an auto dodge that it also is a counter. You just can't do anything during it. Also, the C-Spec is very annoying to fight, and I recommend you guys actually check out Dongan if you haven't already. It's very fun to use. Next up is going to be Dioseco. Dioseco is actually going to be in Broken at the bottom. Now, the reason for this is because of the ult, the uh, third ability, the ultimate of it, actually got a nerf recently where it has a sound effect, so it's very, very easy to block. However, it is still very powerful because the C-Spec stuns, and the first ability stuns. Now, this, the second ability... Oh, not the first ability. The first ability is an auto-dodge. The second ability stuns. The first ability is an auto-dodge, and it is also really good. 
Next up is going to be Explosion. I'm going to be putting Explosion in bad. Now, the reasoning for this is because the block breaks actually got removed on the abilities, or it actually would have went up in the tier list because I did a little bit more research on it. But it, yeah, it is actually going to be in bad for now. Next up is going to be Forge Dakuma. Forge Dakuma is going to be in really good at the top of really good. Now, the reasoning for this is because there is a Forge glitch where it can make it so you can't play the game. Also, it is just a uh, Nakuma. It is very good. It has a Sano. You know, it's just good because of that. It also has a go really good combo potential. Next up is going to be Frostfire. Now, Frostfire, in my opinion, I'm going to be putting it in meh. I'm going to put it at the bottom of meh. Now, the reason I put it in good last time is because I just, I liked it a lot. I had a lot of bias towards it, but now as I faced it more, you can block the first ability, which makes it not very good. So, it's going to be at the bottom of meh. However, I did make combos over if you guys want to go check that out. Next up is going to be Gold Sand. Gold Sand is actually going to be at the bottom of bad. Now, the reason for this is because it's supposed to be a raw damage bloodline, but it doesn't actually do that much damage. There's not much other much else to say other than that. Next up is going to be Wanziyame. Now, Wanziyame is actually going to be in good, below Akuma, above Black Shock. Now, the reasoning for this is because Wanziyame is just it's just a pretty good bloodline now. Uh, the Z-Spec, actually, you could you could steal Chi during it. Uh, all the hand signs got removed but from basically all the abilities, and the second ability damage actually got increased, so it's just a really decent bloodline now. Next up is going to be Ice. Now, Ice, in my opinion, uh, I'm going to be putting it in bad. I'm going to be putting it at the top of bad. Now, the reason for this is because the first ability is really good for infinite combos, but that doesn't, it isn't good enough to put it in the good tier simply because of that. Next up is going to be Ink. Now, Ink I'll be putting at the top of man. Now, the reason for this is because it's just a better version of Clay, so it's going to be right next to Clay. It does have stuns. The weapon spec is very good. Uh, you can troll people with it. And that's pretty much it. Ink just isn't very good in my opinion, but it is in meh. Next up is going to be Apollo Sand. Now, Apollo Sand actually got a buff recently, a big buff recently. So it's actually going to be in good above Wanziyame. Now, the reasoning for this is because the weapon spec of it, like the weapon ability, is just really good. It is just a really good bloodline now. I mean, the abilities itself aren't good, but do not be surprised if you see people using Apollo Sand in the nearby future. Next up is going to be Eternal. Now, Eternal, I put it in Broken last time, but I actually realized my mistake. It's actually going to be at the top of really good. Now, the reason for this is because Eternal is just really good, but I do not find it broken to fight. I do not find it broken to face either, but it is really good to use for combos. Next up is going to be Jokin. Now, Jokin, I'm going to be putting in good. Uh, probably like below Wanzi. I mean, now the reasoning for this is because Golden Jokei is just a completely better version. There's no re real reason to ever use Jokei besides the fact that you're just unlucky and haven't gotten Golden Jokei. So that's pretty much going to be it. Next up is going to be Kakatsu. Now, Kakatsu is going to be at the bottom of men. Now, the reason for this is because it actually can do a bunch of damage and it does have stuns. However, it just doesn't have anything special about it that puts it above any of the other bloodlines. Next up is going to be Kajin. Now, Kajin, in my opinion, is, I'm going to put it in good. Probably right here in good now the reasoning for this is because kaijin it does do a lot of damage now and the first ability actually was buffed however you cannot do the weapon spec glitch anymore so it's not as good as it used to be and it's just a it's a it's still a good blood on to use you know it's still good that's why it's in the good tier next up is going to be karada now karada is actually going to be above kakatsu and below frostfire and men now the reasoning for this is because karada you can do a lot of damage with it and the second ability does give you iframes but there's not much else about this blood that makes it special Next up is going to be Kenichi. Now, Kenichi, without a doubt, without a doubt, guys, is going to be in Broken. I'm sure you guys, um, I'm sure you guys understand this. I actually got a buff recently, which is absolutely ridiculous because the Bloodline is just ludicrous. It's, it was already broken and they buffed it. Why, Rel? Why? Next up is going to be Doke. Now, the reason for Doke is actually going to be in really good below Bubble Above Ashes Storm. Now, the reason for this is because it is really good for M1 combos. The C-Spec of it is also really good, and the weapon ability also is extremely good because it does not knock people back. It actually makes you do a ton more damage. Next up is going to be Kanchu. Now, Kanchu, in my opinion, is going to be in really good above Doke below Bubble. Now, the reason for this is because it does still drain Chi. It still does drain a ton of Chi, but it does not do nearly as much damage as it do did before. And just because of that, I haven't seen it as much, but it still is really good, guys. Next up is going to be Lava. Now, Lava is actually going to be in bad at the top of bad. Now, the reasoning for this is because it does do a lot of damage sometimes, but it actually is strictly AoE based and it is not good against bosses anymore. Next up is going to be Minakami. Now, Minakami is actually going to be at the bottom of really good. Now, the reason for this is because I feel like the mode ability of it is very, very, very good. But the other abilities of it are very lackluster. Next up is going to be Mud. Now, the reasoning for Mud being at the bottom of bad is because why use Mud? Dude, why is this even a thing in this game? Next up is going to be Nature. And in Nature, I'm going to be putting at the bottom of Mad because it just is a good bloodline to use. But why not use Shizen or Raiken Shizen, which are just purely better versions of it? 
Next up is going to be Nectar. Now, Nectar, I'm going to be putting it above Karana, below Frost. Now, the reasoning for this is because Nectar, I'm putting it below Clay, but the Z-Spec of Nectar, you can't actually stun with, which makes it not bad. Next up is going to be Okami. Now, Okami is going to be at the top of bad. Now, the reason for this is because it's supposed to be a pure DPS bloodline, but it just not does not do enough damage as it used to. It just doesn't. It doesn't do nearly as much damage as it used to, and that's just going to be the reason why it's going to be at the top of bad. Next up is going to be Paper. Now, Paper, in my opinion, is actually going to be... You guys are going to be surprised by this. It's going to be in good below Joke above Kaiju. Now, the reason for this is because Paper's abilities actually got recently got moved to the element slots. It can be used in element slots, guys. I don't need to speak on how ridiculous that is. Next up is going to be Atomic. Now, I'll be putting Atomic in good below Paper and above Kaiju. Now, the reason for this is because it actually can be used in element slots. Now, it actually is a basic component of a lot of one-shot combos. So, that is the only reason why it actually is good, but it is a good bloodline. Next up is going to be Ryan. Ryan Akuma. Now, in my opinion, Ryan Akuma just... It doesn't hit right with me. But... It actually is really good. I'm going to put it below Forged Akuma. I sh I kind of crapped on it last time, but Forged Akuma actually is pretty good, guys. It does give you iframes. Next up is going to be Run Goku. Now, Run Goku, in my opinion, is actually going to be at the top of really good. Now, the reason for this is because the same reasoning as last time. The fifth mode actually got nerfed or it would be even broken. Uh, it has a lot of versatility. It's just a really good bloodline in general, but nothing makes it broken besides Almighty Push. Next up is going to be Ren Shiki. Ren Shiki is going to actually going to be a meh at the top. Now, the re reasoning for this is because I feel like Ren Shiki does have a place in Shindo life. However, it does not do anything, and I feel like it does need a damage buff because nobody uses it as it is right now. Next up is going to be Riser Akuma. Now, in my opinion, Riser Akuma is actually going to be in Broken above Goto Joke. Now, you guys may think why, but Riser Akuma actually may be the best Akuma in the game. You guys may not have knew this, but during the auto dodge, you can dash and break people's block yeah you can break people's block in the riser auto dodge and you can also use any c spec in the game why that shouldn't happen next up is going to be raiken shizen now raiken shizen is actually going to be in really good below eternal the reason for this is because raiken shizen is just a really good bloodline it is a basic component of a lot of one shots however it did get a nerf so it doesn't do nearly as much damage as it used to but it still is a really really good bloodline guys do not disrespect raiken shizen now i can see this tier list right now so i'm going to move some things around because i feel like some things have got a little bit misplaced based on how many things are here so i'm just going to order the, reorder them real quick all right, so I have actually reordered them. You guys can see the clear difference here. Uh, I actually reordered the Akumas. I reordered some of the good ones. Uh, but yeah, that's actually going to be all I'm going to reorder. Next up is going to be Sabaru. Now, Sabaru, in my opinion, is going to be in really good below Raikish is and above Bubble. Now, the reasoning for this is simply because it is very good in 1v1s, and the C-Spec is actually really fun to use. You can glitch people into the ground with it, which actually makes it a fun bloodline. It is very, very good for 1v1s, but in a team fight, you will get destroyed with Sabaru, guys. It is not good for team fights. Next up is going to be Sand. Now, Sand is actually going to be in good, uh, like, probably above Kite. No, nah, it would be above Azarashi, below Atomic. Now, the reason for this is because Sand can be used in combos. However, it did get a nerf recently. And the Z is actually an auto dodge. If you guys didn't know that, it's very nice, and you can fly with it. Next up, we're going to be Satori Akuma. Now, Satori Akuma is actually going to be at the top of really good. Uh, I'm actually going to move Rengoku below all of the Akumas. Now, the reasoning why Satori is going to actually be... At the top of really good as of now is because Satori is just the weapon spec is ridiculous. The stun is super good. You get an auto dodge and a counter in the same bloodline, and the C spec is just fun to use. You fake die and run away. It's just very nice. It's a very good mwah, bloodline. Next up is gonna be Scorch. Scorch is gonna be a probably in the middle of bad. Uh, Scorch just I don't feel like it has gotten much love from the devs lately. It definitely needs a buff. Next up is going to be Seishin. Now, Seishin is actually going to be at the bottom of really good. Now, the reason for this is because the third ability is extremely good from Seishin. It actually did get a huge buff recently. So, that is... I would... I am looking forward to seeing Seishin in 1v1s and duels, guys. Next up is going to be Sengoku. Now, Sengoku is actually going to be right here in really good. Now, the reason for this is because the second ability, it is still a clear component of one-shot combos. However, guys, it is not nearly as good as it used to be. It has a delay on it now. Please understand this and don't get mad for me putting it here. It has a delay on it now. The rarity of it needs reduced. Next up is going to be Senko. Now, Senko is actually going to be in good. Probably in the middle of good. Now, the reason for this is because it actually did get a buff recently. 
and it is now a Z spec, which actually is pretty cool. It is a very cool bloodline. You can use it in the element slots too now, which is very neat. Next up is going to be Shadow. Now, Shadow is actually going to be in meh, above Nectar, below Frostfire. Now, the reasoning for this is because Shadow's C spec is actually pretty good. And it actually did get a buff on the, uh, on the uh, first ability and no longer has end lag. However, the second ability and third ability actually have got nerfs recently. So, that's why it's actually going to be in meh. Next up is going to be Shindai. Now, I am going to do you guys justice for this tier list. Shindai is at the bottom of Broken. It is still Broken, guys. The clones are ridiculous. It is an overhyped... Overhyped Bloodline. I would not say that enough. You guys overhyped Shindai so much after the nerf. But those clones... Oh my gosh, those clones. Next up is actually going to be Shizen. Now, Shizen is actually going to be at probably in good above a Zimsenko, below a Kuma. Now, the reason for this is because you can actually replace every single Raikou Shizen combo with Shizen. However, the first ability does not stun. Next up is going to be Sound. Sound's actually going to be in good above uh, above Apollo Sand and below Black Shock. Now, the reasoning for this is because Sound, you know... It's sound. It doesn't do as much damage as other damage bloodlines, and it pretty much does the exact same. You just use it in case you're stuck with it. Next up, it's going to be Steam. Steam's actually going to be in good above Azarashi. No, not above Azarashi. Below Azarashi, above Wanziyame. Now, the reasoning for this is because the dash does glitch out sometimes, but it still is a good bloodline to use because of the dash. Next up, it's going to be Storm. Storm's actually going to be in good below paper above Atomic. Now, the reason for this is because the second ability got end lag removed recently, which is very nice. It makes it really good for combos. And th there was a C spec added recently, which is very cool and it stuns people. Next up, it's going to be Tengoku. Now, Tengoku, you know, uh, the C spec is the only broken thing about Tengoku, but Tengoku is actually going to be at the bottom of broken. Now, the reason for this is because Tengoku C spec, it just. It has a lot of oomph to it, and Tengoku, everyone uses it, man. I see Tengoku everywhere, but it just, once they nerf that C-Spec, and it will get nerfed, it just, it will fall off entirely, which is why it's actually going to be at the bottom or broken. Next up is going to be Glacier. Now, Glacier is actually going to be in meh, above Bolt, below Frostfire. Now, the reason for this is because, you know, it's a Glacier. The last ability is pretty cool, and the C-Spec of it is just good, but it drains Chi way too fast. Next up is going to be Inferno. Inferno, in my opinion, is actually going to be at the bottom of really good. Now, the reason for this is because Inferno just... It is a really good bloodline. There's not much else to say about that. It's just it's just extra damage, basically. It is really good, though. Ryan Ren Goku, guys. Ryan Ren Goku. Now, it is hard to rank Ryan Ren Goku simply because the bloodlines are, bloodline abilities are so unique compared to other ones. But it does have a Ren Goku pool that does more damage. And... The last ability of it, the last ability is also super unique. It's very hard to rate this bloodline accurately because it's going to take fighting it a bunch to actually truly see what it's capable of. Simply because, you know, it's just a very unique bloodline compared to all the other ones. And the C-Spec just does a lot of damage. So, for this tier list, for this tier list, as it is, Ryan Red Goku is going to be in Broken below Shindai above Tengoku. Now... This may change. It may be the most broken bloodline in the game, but no one knows. Next up is gonna be Vine, guys. This is at this is this is second on broken. Um, I don't think there's much else to say about this Vine. After watching the video a few times, I was just like, why was this added to the game? Why is this a thing? It has an auto dodge that you could attack during, that drains stamina. You can make it last like 10 seconds, and you could turn it off and on whenever you want. It has no cooldown. And it has a ton of stuns. The C spec, you can just hide under the map, go ninja mode, just pop up wherever you want, and just be like, hey there, how you doing? Next up, it's actually gonna be hair. Now, hair is actually gonna be in broken below vine above riser kuma. Now, the reason for this is because hair does not have a global cooldown on the second ability, which makes it extremely overpowered. And the C spec is also pretty broken, it has no end lag. All the abilities are just good on hair. That's why it's gonna be third on broken, guys. Anyway, guys, that's actually going to be it for, it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.